Uh, next thing that we have is new data suggests that PS5 has outsold Xbox Series X and S two to one. Uh, what do you think about that? I think that's very plausible. I think PlayStation had a very strong launch with a lot of games that were unique, right? Returnal, Demon Souls, Miles Morales was on PS4 and PS5 at the time. So people were looking to take advantage of the new hardware. You got the new controller, which is clearly a next generation step up with the dual sense, the haptic um haptic vibrations uh technology. You have the triggers. Um it, it definitely adds next level immersion to your gaming. Um, whereas Xbox, we were waiting on Halo Infinite. We were waiting on next gen versions of games to come. We still don't have a new Gears of War in this era. Um, so really, we were buying the Series X and S on the promise of like, hey, the future with Xbox is bright. We've acquired all these studios. We have all these games in the works. We've shown you teases of Perfect Dark, Avowed. Now now we've seen Indiana Jones and stuff like that. So they definitely came out stronger out of the gate. And PlayStation has Spider-Man. They've got God of War. They have these quality exclusives that bring you in, um, whereas Xbox spreads the field a little more with Game Pass and with launching their games on PC day of that allows more gamers to be able to jump in and play. And there's really no reason to buy an Xbox if you have a gaming PC or something like that. So that affects their console sales as well because their community is more than just the box. Whereas PlayStation, it's all about the box. Everything yeah. is motivated to sell their box. Yeah. Yeah, I, I dig it. I, I think with, with everything PlayStation has done, you have to appreciate it. Uh, over mm -hmm. the years, we've seen some incredible games, you know, for that system, right? I think the other thing too to consider is that you know who's looking at the data now um, as much as like I, I know we used to focus on hey because this number is so high for this particular console you know they're winning the race in the console war I know we're going to talk about that later a little bit but who's really looking at that stuff I think at this stage you know for me when you think about what Xbox has done to be everywhere the everywhere strategy right. Uh, especially mm -hmm. with the Game Pass and all the subscriptions. And there's streaming platforms and subscriptions pretty much everywhere now, right? It's not just exclusive to the gaming uh, industry. I think that, you know, that having the users that are still subscribed is a bigger deal, especially if you're not really focusing on console sales anymore. I don't think that Xbox is focusing on console sales as much. I know they've, they've mentioned that they're still going to make consoles, uh, it's just like a bridge or an extension of the things that they're doing at, at that point. It's not, it doesn't even feel like a primary focus anymore. Right. Because when you think about how things are being done now, and you know, I definitely want to hear your take on this. It's like, it's really pushing what the Xbox, the, the game pass has to offer, right. Whether that's a day one situation or not a day one situation. Hey, you can play that game right now. You know, if you're, if you have Xbox game pass, it's not, Hey, get the console and play the game. And I think even that conversation has changed over the years to make us believe, not everyone, though, to make us believe that we actually own the games that we're subscribed to on Game Pass, which is, you know, could be a little shady marketing, depending on who says that. Right. So I think that's the conversation, you know, but yeah, but go ahead. What, what's, what's your take on that? And that is 100 percent on point. I mean, you can buy a Samsung TV with the Xbox app built in. You can access Project X Cloud on your phone and play games through the cloud in your phone or web browser. So, I mean, the need for the box is like pretty much gone. And it, even if you buy a disc, what is a disc nowadays? It's just a verification token that you have to put in to prove that you own the game. The game is not on the disc. You prove that you own the game. Xbox Live fires up. It downloads the data from the internet, which means you always need internet now to be able to download the game and to be able to play it. Sometimes it even has to check in with the internet to keep playing the game. So you you must remain online for certain games, which we could argue about all that stuff all day. Um, but yeah, I think that shows that their plan is not motivated on console sales. They said, I, I think they've pretty much admitted that they can't they can't beat PlayStation on exclusives and on just making incredible experiences like they have. I think they will at some point. They will really get things together with all the studios that they've done, but that's playing the long game. Right now, they can create this sense of Xbox 
as a community rather than the box and the loyalty to the console and all that. It's more about, wow, I got Game Pass and with Game Pass, I can play anything I want, anytime, anywhere, any place, whether my Xbox is here in the living room or I'm on my PC and in the game room or if I got my phone and I'm on a flight or I got my Steam Deck or whatever it is you're using as your peripherals. And that's only going to expand more and more uh, as things go along. So I think Xbox just wants to be so prevalent and everywhere that you can't ignore them. And that is a pretty powerful um, competition, I would say. And competition breeds innovation. So I think it's good all around. Everybody's competing in different spaces and it's a good thing. Absolutely. And we're going to see more of that with the announcement that they have on Thursday. 